All right, so you do not have to like gin and tonic to like an espresso tonic, but you do need to have access to actual espresso, something that's made on a proper espresso machine or something like this flare espresso press, something that can produce actually like nine bars of pressure and make what we think of in the modern era as proper espresso. Or you could use a mocha pot, I think. Let's give it a try. So I've had my Flare Espresso Press for about six months now, and I've been brewing with it pretty much every day since I got it. But I've been wanting to run some head-to-head -head tests with my old Mocha Pot to see how they compare. Now this might seem a little silly to some people because the Flare Pro 2 is about $300 and the Mocha Pot is like under $20, but I genuinely want to know if the Mocha Pot can still hold its own. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there wondering the same thing, if for no other reason than the huge price difference between these two brewers. So the natural question is, do I need to spend all that money or can I go cheap and still be happy with my coffee? And to be clear, I'm not asking, will it taste just like the Flair? I know it won't, but will it still taste good side by side with the Flair? I don't really know, so that's why we're here. I'm gonna be using Q-Tonic today, but Fever Tree would also be an excellent choice. And for the coffee, I'm using the Starbucks Reserve Rwanda Blonde Roast. Now, if you're one of those people who's all like, oh, this stuff sucks because it's from Starbucks, I have one thing to say to you. <laughs> oh, you guys crack me up. Look, I know it's really posh to comment and say how terrible Starbucks is, but not everything they make tastes like burnt coal. It's an incredible coffee. It's got this bright floral, citrus, caramelized sugar, molasses flavors. It's gonna make a kick-ass espresso tonic. And speaking of the espresso tonic, it's one of these weird and wonderful modern coffee inventions that kinda shouldn't work in my mind, but when you get it right, it's amazing. I wanted to start with the espresso tonic rather than some sort of traditional steamed milk drink, because the espresso tonic is a really hard test for the quality of an espresso shot. Steamed milk and sugar can cover over a multitude of sins, but tonic water is a bit pickier. This is like the espresso equivalent of playing a solo acoustic performance in a good concert hall. Everything you do either right or wrong is amplified and there is nowhere to hide. The coffee flavors here need to be strong, complex, and in the right balance for this drink to work properly. Your shot can't be too bitter because tonic water is already bitter. It can't be very sour because tonic flavor is very sour citrus forward. There's only enough sweetness there to keep those flavors balanced. And then if the flavor is too weak, it will just taste like something dirtied up the tonic rather than complementing it. The coffee flavor has to be dominant here. Compared to tonic, coffee is like a meaty, umami-rich flavor, and when you blend that with citrus, those rich flavors need to be dominant, or else... Well, think of it like this. Do you want a taco to have a little sour citrus flavor to complement the meat flavors, like a little squeeze of lime on top? Or do you want to drop a little taco meat in your margarita? Yeah, one of those is delicious, one of those is disgusting. So the coffee needs to pack a punch here to make this work. This is why I'm cutting off the mocha pot halfway through the brewing cycle to get a stronger shot of coffee. This will help give it a fighting chance against the flare. And speaking of the flare, I'm not using a dedicated espresso grinder or a coffee scale to weigh my shot output because I don't have either one of those tools. But honestly, I think a lot of people are not necessarily going to have both of those just because they bought a flare. So could my shot taste better if I had a better grinder and I was more precise? Yeah, maybe. But comparing the mocha pot to good enough espresso seems a little bit more like a real world test rather than comparing it to a 10 out of 10 perfect espresso shot. The average person is going to have a learning curve when they start brewing espresso anyways, and usually the main goal is consistently getting shots that don't suck. And with a decent grinder like I have, and just timing my shots, I consistently get espresso with a pretty low suck factor. And this shot was no exception. Well, I guess it's time to put these together and give you my thoughts. <sighs> All right, well, here we are, the moment of truth, time to taste both of these. Now, I know that I like espresso tonic out of the flare. Um, I've, I've done it before, it's delicious but I haven't tried the mocha pot before, obviously, that's why we're here today. So I'm gonna give this one, um, give this one first dibs on my palate because I'm afraid that if I try this first, then this might taste a little bit flat. And you know, I wanna give it a fair shake. If it's delicious on its own, on my first impression, then I would definitely recommend it to you guys. Um, and then we'll see how it stacks up. So enough jibba jabba, 
Here we go. This is the Mocha Pot Espresso Tonic. Cheers. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, even trying it first, it's a little bit flat. I wanna see if I can get the rest of this shot in here. I don't know if I just had more ice. Um, I mean, obviously there's a lot more, I guess there's a lot more volume once the espresso shot settled, um, the flare shot, once that settled, it, it definitely had a lot less volume. At first I was like, oh, it's pretty comparable, but there was like half the liquid in there. So now that I've got the entire mocha pot shot in here, all 25 glorious grams of ground coffee, I'm gonna try it again. It's kind of muted doesn't have a whole lot of interest to it so um i don't know all right let's try this crema is like curdling on it it's kind of funny here we go wow man they are night and day different so the crazy thing about this is that the espresso accents the acidity in the tonic the citrus flavors the sort of lemon and lime flavors that come through uh, with the tonic and that's something that i think gin does really well the cool thing about gin and tonic is that the botanicals and flavors in the gin play really well off of the citrus elements in, in your tonic what's really shocking about this is that espresso and gin don't taste similar at all but the tonic here is reacting to the espresso the same the same way that it does to gin in that it's boosting up all the citrus flavors and and really brightening it up so this is bright and vibrant this is really summery um it's freaking good if you've never had an espresso tonic like you should try it like take a bottle to your local shop and just be that weird guy there and order a shot and then go to your table and try it out because you it, it's good let's go back to this it just tastes watery. You know, the, the citrus bag is not there. The, the richness isn't there. The complexity of flavor isn't there. It's just muted. I just don't think the mocha pot is strong enough. To be perfectly honest, I, I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's strong enough. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Luke. This is the homemade edition. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, video requests. If you want to support me, go ahead and check the links to Patreon and consider becoming a patron. So until next time, guys, cheers.